Hello and welcome to Draper Diamond here on the campus of Lipscomb University in beautiful Nashville, Tennessee as we get ready for beautiful and exciting NCAA D1 softball here as the Northern Iowa Panthers take on your Lipscomb Bisons. The Bisons have already taken the field and they'll get ready. But first, let's go over the Panthers lineup. Leading off, the designated player number 12, Maya Dodge. Batting second, the right fielder number 19, Sammy Moss. Batting third, the center fielder number 14, Madison Parks. Batting fourth and catching number 25, Emmy Wells. Batting fifth, the left fielder, number 10, Cameron Schaefer. Batting seventh and playing shortstop, Kylie Sanders. Or batting sixth and playing shortstop, number seven, Kylie Sanders. Batting seventh and playing third, number six, Brooke Snyder. Batting eighth and playing first, number 21, Darren Lamprick. And batting ninth and playing second, number 15, Taylor Hogan. On the mound for your Bisons is the right-hander, number 11, Lane Barefoot. The freshman is 2-2 two and two this season in five starts with a 2.33 ERA. Dodge will dig in as we get ready for first pitch. It is a beautiful 76 degrees here in Nashville, not a cloud in the sky. And I'll tell you what, this... This is beautiful weather. This is the kind of weather that you love to play in and come out and cheer on your Bisons. Barefoot will tow the rubber. First pitch here is inside for a ball. First pitch here at 208. And this game is underway. Second pitch from Barefoot is swung on and missed by Dodge. Batting 276 this season with four hits, eight hits, four runs, a double, a triple, a homer, and five RBI. As the pitch is lifted into left, that'll get down to the wall. One up the wall, thrown in a little high, and that'll be a leadoff double for Maya Dodge. The freshman gets the game started for the Panthers in style. As we have a little break here, let's go over the defense here for the Bisons. Playing short, Amy Vet Vetula. Batting, er, in right field is Presley Liebrick. In left is Macy Conconin. At third, Caitlin Belding as the pitch from barefoot to Sammy Moss is outside I'm sorry, is, catches the outside corner for a strike. At third, Caitlin Belding. At first for the Bi Lady Bisons is Elise Shoemaker. The designated player for the Lady Bisons as the pitch is down low for a ball to even the count, 1-1. One, one, is Camry Rich. In center field, Joy Jarizzo. Catching for the Lady Bisons, Caitlin Hunt. And at second, is Kelly Paulson. That pitch from barefoot to Moss is fouled up and away to take the count to one and two. One, two count now to Sammy Moss is the pitch outside for a ball to even it up two and two. Moss batting 190 this season. This season's young, so lots of time to increase that, as she'll do right here. A single right back up the middle, center field. Jarizzo fields, no throw in, and it is one to nothing. Two batters, two hits, and the Panthers lead one to nothing.
That'll bring up the center fielder, Madison Parks. The lefty will dig in, batting 208. Five hits, eight runs, and four RBI. Pitch is called on the outside corner for a strike. Both the Bisons and the Panthers trying to shake off a little losing streak. As the Bisons have dropped the, their past three, the Panthers, on the other hand, have dropped their last five. So somebody's going to get a win today as that pitch is swung on and missed by Parks. That will make the count 0-2 now. Pitches in the dirt. That will make the count one and two. Pitches up and away there. That will even the count at two and two. As Madison Parks looks to extend this inning for the Bisons. Pitch from barefoot, a little low, and that'll run the count full, three and two. Madison Parks, the red shirt freshman, sends the ball the other way on a hop, and an another hit for the Panthers. Still no outs here in the inning. All three to hit, or all three to bat have gotten a hit and reached. And that'll bring up the catcher, Emmy Wells. We're going to have a little meeting at the mound here. Wells, a 222 hitter this season. 250 with runners in scoring position, which she does here with runners on first and second. Six hits this season for Wells and 27 at bats, five RBI, uh, three runs. She does have 11 strikeouts. The lefty, however, is tied, or the righty, however, is tied for the team lead with two home runs. Barefoot. Delivers a pitch right over the middle, swung on and missed for strike one. The ball's up and in. That'll run the count one to one. Maya Dodge led off the game with a double to left center. Sammy Moss brought her in with a single. Madison Parks singled to advance Moss to second. And that's where we stand now with Emmy Wells with a 1-2 count. As that ball is outside. That'll run the count 2-2. Two, two. Barefoot's running that count up. She's gotten every batter to at least a two-strike count now. Just can't seem to put them away as that ball's lifted down the right field line. That will drift out of play. Count remains 2-2. Two, two. Two, two. 
and there it is. A swing and a miss for a strikeout. The first out of the inning by Barefoot. That's her 11th strikeout of the season. And that'll bring up the left fielder, Cameron Schaefer. A junior right-handers batting 214. Is She'll look at a pitch on the inside corner for a strike. Called by home plate umpire Kevin Bessemer. He's joined by Chris Neighbors at first and KJ Bessemer over down the third base line. That pitch fouled straight back. Pitch is down and away for a ball. That'll run the count to one and two now. And back-to-back -back strikeouts there for Barefoot as that one swung on a miss. The second out of the inning, a much-needed out there. And now the Bisons will try to escape this jam here, only allowing one run. Pitches down and in for another ball, 2-0. Barefoot gets one right over the heart of the plate, 2-1 now. To the left-hander, Sanders. Sanders will take a swing at that one and foul it off of her leg. That'll make it a 2-2 count now. Barefoot kicks and deals. Oh, line drive. What a snag there at first by Shoemaker for the final out of the inning. And the uh, Bisons will escape, only allowing one run as they'll come up now in the bottom of the first inning looking to even this game. It'll be Amy Vitula, Presley Liebrich, and Macy Conconin leading off here when we come back.
Welcome back to the action here at Draper Diamond as Amy Vitula digs in to begin the bottom of the first inning for the Lady Bison. She'll get a running start. And look at that one outside for a ball. Vitula, the shortstop, leads the team in hits this season with 15. As she'll take a mighty hack there for a strike. Leads the team in hits and runs. 15 hits, 12 runs. Really the spark for this offense. Uh, when she goes, the team goes. As she'll look at one up and away for a ball there. Watching the pitch by Kalen Packard, the junior who is 1-3 this year. With a 2-2-4 ERA. She'll get the pitch. Rock and wind. As Vitula swings through that one. For strike two. 2-2 two -two count now. Vitula, one of seven on the Lady Bisons to start and play all 13 games this season. As she'll... Look at that one outside. Run the count full. I mentioned she leads the team in hits and runs, but she also has a very superb eye around the plate, leading the team with 11 walks. A show look at this pitch by Packard. Called on the outside corner for a strike. And that is the first out of the inning and the first strikeout of the game for Packard, her 25th of the season. Now to bring up Presley Liebrich, the right fielder. She'll look up, look at a pitch up and away for ball one. Liebrich, a 333 hitter this season. Has six doubles that leads the team. And 10 RBI, which is the most on the team, as she'll check her swing there, but foul that one off. 1-1 uh, one, one count now. The junior from Murfreesboro, Tennessee, digs in. Waves the bat behind her head. And looks at a pitch down and away in the dirt for a ball. 2-1 count now. Liebrich will send that one to left field. Right at Schaefer for the out. So, here comes the left fielder, Macy Conconan. The junior with a 268 batting average. Looks at a pitch up and away for ball one. Pickard's been nibbling at that spot, just hasn't quite gotten it over the plate throughout her first three batters. And that time she does, right on the outside corner for strike one. Really nibbling that outside corner there by uh, Packard is. Show rock and deal. That one fouled straight back. Up and over the press box. One, two count now. Pitch up and away or a two, two count. Two is across the board. Deuces are wild, some might say. As Packard, number two, digs in with a 2-2 count here. Two outs in the inning. Ball up and in 
to run it full. Full count, and Conconin fouls it back to stay alive. And the junior draws only her third walk of the season. And the Bisons have a runner on board. That'll bring up the sophomore, Caitlin Belding. Playing third base today. And she will have a runner on base now, looking to do some damage. Right-hander will look at a pitch. Called for a strike at the knees. Right-hander very quiet with her hands and her delivery. The she'll look at a ball down for a 1-1 count. Not a lot of motion in her batting stance and her swing. Just kind of loads quietly and swings through the zone with a lot of power. She'll take a hack there, foul that one straight back into the parking lot. One, two, count now. Belding watches that pitch. Up for a ball. Catcher Wells will check Conconin at first, but she wasn't going anywhere. And two, two, count now. Bison's. Trying to answer the Panthers' score in the top of the frame. Packard will deal, and another ball up and away, and that will run the count full. So back-to-back -back full counts now for the Lady Bisons. Really working that count and working this pitch count of Packard. And... and the team as Belding draws her sixth walk and that'll put a running in score runner in scoring position for at least shoemaker so two on two out now for the bisons a chance to get on the board with one swing of the bat from Elise shoemaker freshman Held up there for a strike on the outside corner. Shoemaker batting 176. Does have one RBI and a triple on her ledger as she'll take a swing there and swing through it, or swing over it rather, for strike two. Bisons haven't had a hit this inning, but they do have two on. Looking to scratch across a run. As that pitch is outside for a ball. One, two count now. Shoemaker from Lexington, Kentucky. And she will look at a called strike three on the outside corner. Two strikeouts that inning for Kalen Packard. And we'll head to the top of the second inning now with the Panthers leading one to nothing. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Bison softball right here on the Bison's radio network.
We're back here at Draper Diamond as Snyder, Brooks Snyder to be exact, will dig in for the Panthers. Playing third base today, the right-handers batting 130 on the season. As she'll swing through the first pitch of barefoot. First strike one. That pitch by Barefoot catches the outside corner. First strike two, and Brooke Snyder's now in the hole. 0-2. Oh and she'll swing through that one. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night for Lane Barefoot as she sends Brooke Snyder to the bench, her third strikeout of the game. That'll bring up the first base, Darren Lamprick. She'll swing an inside pitch and foul that one off the handle of the bat. Now after that first inning, three hits. Uh, right after those three hits, though, mowed straight through the, the rest of the Panthers' batting order and already set down one here. She's moving fast, moving efficient, and... Getting the ball over the plate. That one is over the plate, but low for a ball. Lamprick will swing through that one for strike two and barefoot. Just after those first three hits, is now saying, you want it, come and get it. Here it is. Lampert fouls that one straight back to stay alive. Keeps the count at one and two. Barefoot looks at her wristband and delivers a pitch inside for a ball. That'll run the count to two and two. Lampert fouls another one off. Freshman from Silver Lake, Kansas. No, oh, sophomore, I beg your pardon. Sophomore from Silver Lake, Kansas. Had 26 hits last season. Only one so far this season. In eight games played. She'll foul another one off down the line. Count still remains two and two. And she'll swing through that one. Another strikeout for Lane Barefoot. Two in a row. Make it four on the afternoon. And that'll bring up the second baseman, Taylor Hogan. And Barefoot just delivers yet another strike. And there is a line drive right to the first baseman and her it was more of a she stuck her glove up and there it was but that will conclude the inning no hits
settled down. And that will send us to the bottom of the second inning where Camry Rich will get us started. We'll be right back. Welcome back to beautiful Nashville, Tennessee, on the campus of Lipscomb University. As Camry Rich will dig in to get us started here. Started strike. Rich struggling a little bit here at the beginning of the season. 0 .087 batting average. Does have one home run, though. She led the team last year with two homers, so... Really want to get her going to provide a spark for this offense. And she'll watch this one here about inside for a ball. Score on the count, one and one. Rich, the junior from Hickson, Tennessee. Rest the bat on her right shoulder. She'll swing and foul that one straight back. The only way to get out of a slump is to you gotta keep you gotta keep swinging the bat. Just like in basketball, you gotta shoot till you make it. Here, same thing. You just gotta keep swinging, and eventually it'll come through, and and, and the ball will find grass. As she'll look at that one inside for a ball. We'll run the count two two. Rich gets good wood on that one and fouls it off into the parking lot. And the owner of a gray Honda Accord is not going to be happy where that one hit. Right on the driver's side mirror. And that thing's in pieces as Rich will foul one off the inside of her foot to keep the count 2-2. Two -two. Rich looks at that one, a two hopper to the plate, and that'll run the count full now. The Lady Bison's really working Kaylin Packard's pitch count already. Three full counts now this game, and make it three walks now as well, as Rich will pick up her second walk of the season. The Lady Bisons have one on for Joy Jerizzo, the center fielder. The left-hander will look at a pitch on the outside corner. Joy Jerizzo, the sophomore from Clarksville, Tennessee. playing center field today. She'll square around the bunt, miss. Oh, she pulled back for a ball, the throw down to first. Not in time as Rich is back in safely. I mentioned, I mentioned. 
both a losing streak for the Bisons at three, the losing streak for the Panthers at five as Drizzo will get that bunt down, but foul. And that'll be strike two. Drizzo. Swings through that one for a strike. The third strikeout of the afternoon for Kalen Packard. It's the first out of the inning, and that'll bring up the catcher, Caitlin Hunt. Hunt has started every game this season for the Lady Bisons. She'll dig in from the right side of the plate and swing through strike one. Hunt shows bunt, pulls back for a ball. That one misses inside. Caitlin Hunt, the graduate from Creighton, is ready. She'll get this one down. It'll hit the baseline and bounce foul for strike two. So the Bison's really trying situational hitting here, trying to get the runner into scoring position as they prepare to turn the batting order over. Hunt swings, fouls that one off. She'll stay alive, keep the count one and two. Hunt steadies the bat on her right shoulder, and she'll watch that one up and away for a ball to run the count 2-2. Two -two. A busy week for Bison's Athletics as the men's team pulled off a win last night against North Florida in the opening round of the A-Sun tournament. Hunt swings through that one for strike three, and that'll be the second out of the inning. And that'll bring up Kelly Paulson. I mentioned the men's team with their victory over North Florida Osprey last night in the opening round. The women's basketball team also has their opening round of the A-Sun tournament here tonight as well against North Florida. As Paulson will try a drag bunt there that fouled off almost over the netting. So the women's team with the first round of the Ace Sun Tournament here tonight at Allen Arena, 7 o'clock tip. Come out and cheer on your Lady Bisons. As there's a pitch over the outside corner from Packard. We're on the count 0-2, so Paulson in a hole now. Rich will get her lead over at first base. And Paulson will swing through it. So a walk and then strikeout, strikeout, strikeout. And that will send us to the third inning with the Panthers leading one to nothing. We'll be back here from Nashville on the Bisons Radio Network.
Judge gets ready to step in to the batter's box here to lead off the top of the third inning. Dodge led off the game with a double, came around to score the only Panthers run of the game. As they lead here one to nothing. After those three hits that started the game barefoot, really locked down, didn't allow, hasn't allowed a hit since. As that pitch is down low for a ball. She'll get Dodge to swing through that one there. We're on the count 1-1. One, one. So Dodge led off the game with a double. Moss with a single and a RBI and Madison Madison That barefoot just locked down. Strike out, strike out, line out. And then strike out, strike out, line up, line out in the second inning. And now she's got Dodge at a 2 2 count. Dodge will look at that one down. For a ball to run the count full, the 300 hitter this season. After her leadoff double to begin the game, waves the bat and looks at that one inside for a walk. That is only the eighth walk allowed. For Barefoot, the first of the game, and that will bring up Sammy Moss, who has the lone RBI in the game for the Panthers. That strike called on the outside corner. So Dodge with a double and now a walk. She's the first base runner since that first inning for the Panthers. Barefoot going to try to get out of this one again as there's a ball down. Uh, Dodge had started the second. She quickly got back as Hunt threw down, but not in time. Moss will lift that one to left. And Conan is there for the first out of the inning. So that'll bring up Madison Parks. The lefty digs in. in. Throw. Two seconds, she gets the out there. That's the only out they're going to get, though, is the first out or the first out of the inning. Sorry, it's second out of the inning. I'll bring up Emmy Wells. She'll look at that one inside for a ball. There's a strike on the inside corner to run the count one and one. Barefoot delivers now to Emmy Wells. Barefoot get a handful of dirt, throw it down. She digs in to try to 
get out of this inning and move us to the bottom of the third. She'll deliver a pitch up and in for a ball. We're on the count three and one now. Check down of Parks at first, not in time. So a 3-1 count now to Emmy Wells. Wells will swing through that one, and that will run the count full. Vitula will move more into the hole there at shortstop. Some commu more communication going on as they prepare for this full count pitch. Is it's called on the inside corner for strike three. And the Bisons are out of the inning. The fifth strikeout for Lane Barefoot of the game. And that will move us to the bottom of the third inning where the Lady Bisons look to even up this game here at Draper Diamond. We'll be back. Don't go away as the Lady Bisons will come to bat here in the bottom of the third inning against the Northern Iowa Panthers. Amy Vitula digs in from the left side of the plate, looking to get things started here for the Bisons in the bottom of the third inning. And she'll look at strike right. Two little swing and foul that one down the line again. 0 2 count. I mentioned earlier in the game, Vitula leads the team and hits with 15, also leads with 12 runs and leads the team in walks. Kalen Packard will swing and there's a base hit over the head of the shortstop, Kylie Sanders, and that is the first hit of the ball game for the Lady Bisons. And it is the 16th hit of the season for Amy Vitula. So, yet again, the Bisons have a runner on. Can they move them over and move them in? It'll be up to Presley Liebrich first. The junior. Shows bunt, strike anyways. Lee Brick 
looking to advance the runner, gets the bunt down, and it is a beauty. A sacrifice bunt by Presley Liebrich will move Vitula to second base. So Macy Conconin now has a runner in scoring position, looking to tie this game up. Conan walked in her first at bat and sends a high fly ball deep and gone. And just like that, with one swing of the bat, the Lady Bisons lead two to one. The first home run of the season for Macy Conan. And that gives the Bisons the lead. That one was almost a no-doubter. The right fielder, Moss, got twisted around running back to the wall, but she had no chance. That ball was already over her head and over the wall by the time she got there. So the Bisons have the lead now as... Caitlin Belding digs in, looks at a strike. The third baseman. We'll send a line drive to left. Caught by Cameron Schaefer for the second out of the inning. And I'll bring up Elise Shoemaker. Mike to Shoemaker. So how about that? The Bison trailing hadn't had a hit all game. And then a base hit by Vitula, a sacrifice bunt by Liebrich, and a two-run homer by Macy Conconan. And the Bisons go from down 1-0 to up. Two to one. A shoemaker. shoemaker. Up and off the netting. Strike two. One two count now. Shoemaker will watch that one bounce to the plate for a ball. 2-2 two -two count now. So, two runs on two hits for the Lady Bisons. One run on run. And they're hoping they're not done yet. As that one's fouled straight back. Keep the count at 2-2. Two and two. Fouls that one back to keep the count at two and two and keep the inning alive. Bison's wearing purple tops, white pants, white batting helmets. That one's fouled straight back, whereas the Panthers are wearing gray tops on gray pants. Defense playing Shoemaker pretty much straight up. She'll send that one to straight, almost straight away center, just to the just smidge to right field. And that'll be the final out of the inning. But Macy Conconan 
the Oklahoma straight Oklahoma State transfer gives the Bisons the lead with a two-run homer. With the Bisons leading two to one here on the Bisons Radio Network. Cameron Schaefer will dig in here to get us started in the fourth inning as Lane Barefoot is back to the mound looking to continue her recent success as she'll fire a pitch in there inside for a ball. Schaefer struck out her first at bat and, well, she's one of five players to do so on the Panthers team. She'll foul that one off out of play. We're on the count one and one. So, with the Panthers visiting the Bisons here in Nashville, this is the third time these teams have met all time. And, well, both games previously were right here at Draper Diamond just last year. As that one's sent into right field and over to catch it is the right fielder, Presley Liebrick. So... That will bring up the shortstop, Kylie Sanders. So, last year, the Bisons and the Panthers played a doubleheader. First game was won by the Bisons, 9-1, to one, with the second game being taken by the Panthers, 3-1. to one. So, Series is tied all time right now, one game apiece. And right now, if the Bisons can hold on, they'll move that to two and one. But they got to finish out strong here. One one count to Kylie Sanders. Lefty watches that one go by for a ball. 2-1 count now. So there's a pitch hit over the outstretched hand of Vitula. She cannot get it into the outfield for a single. The fourth hit now for the Panthers. So one out now, one on for Brooke Snyder. The junior batting 130 this season. She'll look at a ball here. Barefoot. That ball's inside for a ball. Check down. Three oh count now. Count now.
as Barefoot gets a strike there. Snyder was taking all the way. Play, we're on the count four. Snyder staying alive here, fouls another one off. And after going down 3-0, Barefoot locks down and gets a strikeout there of Snyder, the second strikeout Snyder's had today. And that is the sixth strikeout of the game for Lane Barefoot. Second out of the inning now, and that will bring up Darren Lamprey, a sophomore. The sun is becoming to play a factor here in this game right behind home plate. So whoever's on the mound, whether it be barefoot or Packard, as that ball's inside, they're staring right into the sun. You can see after every pitch barefoot having to cover her eyes, even though she has her visor on to try to block out the sun to be able to see in and see where the ball is coming from. That's greatly going to... Benefit the batters as that ball's over, over to the wall. It'll be a double. No run will score, though, as Snyder holds up at third. So two runners on now, both in scoring position for the Bisons. I mean, for the Panthers, I beg your pardon. So right after the Bisons take the lead, the lead. Panthers are now threatening. And it'll be up to Taylor Hogan, the sophomore. Two on, two out here in the top of the fourth inning. Hogan will look at a strike right over the middle from barefoot. So as I was as I was mentioning, that sun will become a factor for whoever's out in the field looking straight into it. And you can kind of see there in right field as that ball went over her head. Lieb Liebrich was having to look for it as there's a ground ball. Two-third, the throw gets past the first baseman. They'll get the out at second, however. But both runs will score. We do have confirmation there. Both runs will score. So Northern Iowa takes the lead, and it'll be up 4-2 to two here. In the inning, well, I beg your pardon, as now we're going to have a, a conference by the umpires to double check. We know for at least one run has scored, but the second, the second. On that play, the umpires. Fires. So regardless. And there it is. Both runs score. Four. Bottom of the inning, the Panthers will take will score two here in the top of the fourth to take the lead three to two. So, Bisons go back to work, looking to tie this game or take the lead once again. We'll be right back here. It'll be leading off for the Bisons, Camry Rich, George Rizzo, and Caitlin Hunt.
Camry Rich will dig in to begin the bottom of the fourth inning. As we will have a new pitcher on the mound for the Panthers. Sophomore right-hander Samantha Heyer now toes the rubber. She'll look at a ball up and in. That pitch gets away from the catcher, Wells. Not on the count, 3 0. And out, out. for the Bisons. And that'll bring up Joy Jarizzo. So a runner on now. We saw her. Saw As Jarizzo shows bunt, we may see just that. It is a strike. Strike. Rizzo struck out in her first plate appearance against Kaylin Packard. She'll show bunt here and foul that one straight back. Oh, two count now. Rizzo swings and fouls that one up and out of, out of So, of the fourth inning, 0-2 count to Georgia Rizzo. The pitch up and away for a ball. Move the count to one and two. Rizzo fouls that one off to keep the count one and two. So, three runs, five hits, no errors. Three left on base for the Panthers. Two runs, two hits, one error, and three left on base for the Bisons. As that one hits Jarizzo on her. Couldn't get the bunt down, but she advances the runner with a hit by pitch. And we will have a pinch hitter here. As Jesse Brown will take over second base for Camry Rich. So at the plate now, number 25, Megan Klein, out at second for Rich. We now have number 22, Jesse Brown. Brown this season. No hits and Four at bats. She does have one run scored though. So, 
Brown gets the signs. She'll dig in with two on, no out. Take a stab at it and miss for strike one. So, higher comes in, then get out of the jam. Fine, we'll miss that one. Klein does have one hit this season. One for 16. She'll swing through that one for a strikeout in the first out of the inning. So, that'll bring up Kelly Paulson, the junior second baseman. Here's a pitch over the inside corner for a strike. Paulson waves the bat over her shoulder. It'll pop that one straight up. Question is, will it be in play? It will. As the catcher, Emmy Wells, makes the grab along the netting. And the Panthers are one out away from getting out of this jam. But standing in the way of the pitcher, Samantha Hager, is arguably the Bison's best offensive weapon in Amy Vitula. One for two already today. She'll look at a pitch outside for a ball. So I mentioned Samantha Hager. Taking the mound, she's 1-3-1 ERA this season, 105 whip, and 21.1 .1 innings pitched. 22 innings pitched now with two outs here as there is a ball on the outside corner. We're on the count to 2-0. Two zero count for Vitula. She'll swing through that one for a strike to run it to two and one now. Vitula will swing through that one as well, and that'll run the count to two and two. Base hit here, ties the game at three. But an out sends us to the fifth inning with the Bisons trailing three to two. There's a liner right back up the middle, a diving attempt by the center fielder Parks. She cannot get it. Brown will score, and all of a sudden we are tied up. A single by Amy Vitula. She'll advance to second on the throw. To third. And that'll bring up Presley Liebrich. She'll look at a strike, but Liebrich now with a chance to give the Bisons the lead. Once again, we're tied up here in the bottom of the fourth inning after an Amy Vitula double. Ball on the outside corner. That'll even the count up one and one. Libre. 
Take a hack and foul that one back off the roof of the press box. Liebert leads the team in RBI. Looking for a chance to add to that. But she'll go down looking here as that will end the inning. But the Bisons tie the game heading into the fifth inning. We're tied at three right here on the Bisons radio network. Welcome back to Draper Diamond in a tie game heading into the fifth inning. Barefoot still on the mound for the Bisons. Leading off for the Panthers is a designated player, Maya Dodge, who's already reached base twice in a Double. Double in the first and a walk in the third. She scored the first Panthers run, and here we are now. Once again, it's a high ball game. Dodge a little half swing there. She tried to hold up, but went for a strike. She'll. Look at a ball on the inside corner. Just misses. And that'll make the count one and one now. As there's a, hit, a pitch sent deep back and over the wall. A home run for Maya Dodge. The second of the season for her. And she gives the Panthers the lead here. Back in the fifth inning. So, right after the Bison take the lead in the third, the Panthers answer with two to take the lead. Bison scratch across the run in the bottom of the fourth, tie it once again, and now a leadoff homer by Maya Dodge, who's been on board three times tonight now with a double, a walk, and now a homer. And now Sammy Moss with 1-0 count. That'll make it a two. Three-zero count now <clears throat> to Presley, I mean, to Sammy Moss. I beg your pardon. Beg your well, meet it, meet. Home run, three straight balls. Don't want to lose the batter and allow more to reach.
as that one misses inside for a ball. So, well, that'll bring up the center fielder, Madison Parks. We do have two, two defensive changes here for the Bisons in the top of the fifth inning as there's a ball outside as Camry Rich will take over for one on the outside corner for a strike and Megan Klein will now be the designated player. So on one count now to Madison Parks. Parks. Four to three as they continue to bat here in the fifth inning. She'll watch that one on the outside corner for a ball, two to one. Barefoot struggling to find the zone now. She's gone three balls to yet another batter. She'll tow the rubber here in the circle. Rock, lean, fire, high. Back-to-back -back walks now after the leadoff homer. And that'll bring up Emmy Wells. Wells, the catcher today, has struck out both times, swinging and looking. And she'll look at a strike there. Oh, uh, one. Just a picturesque day here in downtown Nashville. As the Bisons and the Panthers battle here. An exciting NCAA D1 softball action as that one swung and missed by Emmy Wells. She'll lift that one down the line, giving chase as the first baseman shoemaker. She'll watch it go over her head. And count remains 0-2. Their braceman, Caitlin Belding, will catch that ball on the end on the throw in, and I'm sorry, Megan Klein will catch that ball on the throw in. Give a words of encouragement to her starting pitcher, Barefoot, as Barefoot delivers one down and in for a ball. That one's lifted high. It's playable and caught by Liebrich. The throw to third's not in time. Both runners will advance. So one out now for the Panthers, but they have two in scoring position. Oh. Never mind. They, they say that the runner at second did not tag. an out. It's two outs now. So now the Bison are one out away from getting out of the inning and they'll get a pop fly to Liebrich and that'll be it. So Bison take them take by Maya Dodge and they lead four to three. Bison have more work to do here in the bottom of the fifth.
We have multiple Bisons and Panthers fans here in the chat cheering on their team. And the Panthers so far have the edge four to three in the bottom of the fifth inning. Leading off now in the bottom of the inning is Macy Kinkonen, who delivered a big blow here in the third inning. The biggest of her career, her first career home run at the D1 level. Gave the Bison the lead, the Bison's the lead, two to one at the time. She'll hold up there for a 1-1 one, one count now, but did not have any at Oklahoma State. Did not have any last year. The junior with her first career home run here at Draper Diamond. On the 2nd of March, 2022. She'll swing through that one. And they could really use another blast from Macy. She'll swing through that one, however. And it'll be the first out of the inning. And that'll bring up third baseman, Caitlin Belding. Spelding fouls the first pitch straight back for a strike. Belding trying to get on and get some action going to try to tie this game up for the Bisons here in the bottom of the fifth inning. She'll foul that one back for a strike. We're on the count 0-2. Well, Belding is... Getting the timing down on Samantha Hare. She's fouled three back now, hoping to get one in play for a hit. And she'll send that one high and deep down the line, but way out in front and out of play. But once again, Belding fouls another pitch off, and she's right on it. She was late on a couple, now she's out in front. Underneath that one, fouls that one off. So... Belding will foul another off. Today, Belding walked in the first, flew out to left in the third. She'll put one out to left this time, a line drive, caught for the out. for the second out of the inning. And here comes Elise Shoemaker. Walking up to Do My Thing by Miley Cyrus. Shoemaker hopes to do her thing by getting on base and Extending the inning for the Bisons. She'll look at a ball high there. Swing through that one for a strike. The 
Bison's really representing in the chat now with a long let's go Bison's. As that pitch is at the knees for a strike. One and two now. I'll tell you what, as that pitch is swung on and missed by Shoemaker, and we'll head to the sixth inning. I'll continue my thought here when we get back in the top of the sixth inning. But after five, the Panthers lead four to three. Welcome back to Draper Diamond as Lane Barefoot's night or day is done after five innings. Six hits, four runs, two earned. She walked three and struck out six. And now taking the mound for the Lady Bison is the left-hander. Emily Yakubowski. As she'll face Kylie Sanders here and deliver a strike. Sanders lined out to first or first at bat and had a single in the fourth. As she'll sim one foul over the Bison's dugout. For an 0-2 count now. So I mentioned the chat last inning. I want to continue my thought as now we have a purple Panther pride representing from Jason Lamprick, who I can only assume is of some relation to Panther first baseman. Darren Lamprick, who is due up third this inning. But I appreciate you all being in the chat. If you can't be here, it is a beautiful day here in Nashville, Tennessee, 76 degrees. If you're out and around, we would love to have you out here cheering on the Bisons. A 1-2 count now to Kylie Sanders. As Emily Yakubowski gets her to foul one out, Vitula covering long range there to get the out and foul grounds, and it's the first out of the inning here in the sixth. Emily Yakubowski on the season, 1-3. She's had 16 innings pitch, allowed 24 hits. 14 runs, 13 of which earned, 11 walks, 10 strikeouts, has allowed one home run. But so we have a pinch hitter now for Northern Iowa as Hannah Kelly, the junior, will come in and hit. 
in place of Brooke Snyder. She'll look at a strike. Oh, one count now. There's a pitch on the outside corner for a strike. I mentioned earlier it's a busy day for Bison's athletics as the women's have a the women's basketball team has the opening round a sun matchup tonight against North Florida here at home at Allen Arena. But a mere 100, 500 feet away from us here, the men's baseball team plays as there's a foul. She there seems to be some confusion here. The first base or the home plate umpire says it hits the gr hit the ground. The first base umpire said no, calls it a strike. They're they're gonna have a conference now to try to figure this out. What's going on? As Again, home plate umpire Kevin Bessemer said it was a foul ball and that it hit the ground, but first base umpire Chris Neighbors on the throwdown signaled an out. But literally a mere 500 feet from us as they do call an out there, so it will be a strikeout for Yakubowski, the 11th of the season for her, and that will bring up Darren Lamprey. The men's baseball team's playing here in the top of the second inning. It's the Battle of the Boulevard as Lipscomb and Belmont are tied at zero. But here at Draper Diamond, we've got a good one going on here in the sixth inning. It's four to three, Panthers lead as Lamprey looks at a strike. Yakubowski puts one that just misses on the outside corner. Or on the count. One ball, one strike. So Yakubowski delivers a pitch up and in now, and that'll run the count two and one. Yeah, Kubowski rocks, delivers, and there is a base hit right up the middle by Lamprick. That's her second hit of the season, and she's on board now here in the sixth inning. A two-out base hit. And that'll make some family in the chat happy. Taylor Hogan steps in with a runner on first now. Yakubowski delivers strike one to Hogan. Bison's looking to get out of this inning and get a run in to tie this game. They're running out of time, only two frames left. They're being out hit here, seven to three, but they're only down a run. As there's a chopper over to third. Coming up with it and firing is Belding, and she'll get the out at first to end the inning. 
So going to the bottom of the sixth, the Panthers lead four to three. After Darren Lamprick's third hit of the season, she's stranded. We'll be back here at Draper Diamond as the Bisons look to tie this game up. Emery Rich will lead off the bottom of the sixth inning for the Bisons. Down a run, four to three, looking to get something started. As Rich will look at a ball. She has walked twice today. Once in the second, once in the fourth. Would hope for a little bit more than a walk this time around. She'll look at a strike there. Rich led the team in home runs just a season ago with two. Already has one this season. As she'll look at that one up for a ball. Rich had one walk coming into today's game. He's already doubled that, tripled that actually with three walks on the season now. And she has a 3-1 count here now. Three-one count, hitters count here to Rich. And she'll keep the bat on her shoulders. And after coming into the game with one walk, she's gotten three today. And the Bisons have a runner at first base. They'll bring up Joy Jerizzo, who has struck out and hit by pitch. She'll lay down a bunt. It's got some backspin on it. It hits off the glove of the third baseman, Snyder, in play. And that will go down as an error. Jerizzo will reach. There's nobody covering third, but either Rich saw it and decided not to or it didn't see it, but she's still standing at second base. But regardless... There's nobody out here and two on for Megan Klein looking to do some damage. A prime opportunity here for the Bison to regain the lead and hopefully nail this one down in the seventh as there's a wild pitch that gets away. And there are now runners in scoring position. Klein swings through that one. 1-1 one, one count now. Yeah. 
Ayer delivers the pitch outside for a ball. A prime opportunity here for the Bisons to take the lead heading into the seventh and final frame. As they have two on and no out. A base hit from Klein right here can put the team on top. She'll swing through that one for strike two. Two two count now. Klein will foul that one back and out of play. She'll stay alive here. Klein struck out in her first at bat today. Looking to put one in play here. But she'll swing through it instead, and that'll bring up the left-hander, Caitlin Woodside, who will come in and hit. Trying to get a run in. At least one to tie. What side a junior from Spring Hill, Tennessee? One for seven on the season, but she does have two RBIs. Would love to make that four RBIs here. Tremendous opportunity here for the Bisons that they do not want to waste. Rich standing on third. Jerizzo standing on second. As we will have a pinch runner here. Rich will trot off of third. And taking over now at third base is Kendall Crawford. And play is just about to resume here as we approach the four o'clock hour. Wherever you're tuning in from, whether it be from Iowa or here in Nashville at work, we're thankful for you tuning in and excited that you're getting to Spend your day watching some tremendous softball here as the Panthers lead 4-3. to three. But the Bisons are threatening, and they're going to have a, a meeting at the mound here after that foul ball. Head coach for the Panthers, Ryan Jacobs did not like something that he saw there. And he's going to have a chat with his entire infield. As I can only assume that's Garrett Fernall out talking to the outfielders. Ayer delivers a pitch high outside for a ball. It's a 1-1 one -one count now. Desperately needing to get a run in here 
They have two chances to do so, however, as that one swung through by Woodside. A one two count now. Two on, one out, one two count for Woodside. She'll look at that one outside for a ball to run it 2 2. As Woodside swings through that one. And that'll be the second out of the inning. So it's down on the shoulders. And truly, if you're a Bisons fan, this is who you want at the plate. The Bisons best hitter on the team, Amy Vitula, with two on and two out. In a one-run game, she'll lift that one foul down the line. She struck out her first at-bat, but in the third, got a single. And in the second, got a double. So, looking once more for another big hit by Vitula here in this bottom of the sixth inning in this one-run game. She'll foul that one straight back with her little kind of a running start, like, like an Ichiro Suzuki, kind of a swing and a, a kind of a slap at it. She'll rest the bat on her left shoulder. Now she raises it and waves it three times. She'll get the tip of the bat on that one and foul it straight back. The count remains 0-2. In this pressure-filled moment, 0-2 count, 2 on, 4-3 Panthers lead with the Bisons threatening. Samantha Heyer fires a pitch outside in the dirt for a ball. Four runs on seven hits, one error for the Panthers. Three runs, three hits, one error for the Bisons. So there's another pitch outside in the dirt for a ball. I'll run the count to two and two. Batula digs in. She's ready. Higher. Set. The wave. That ball's up, and that will run the count full. So, full count here, two outs. Runners will likely be going. Tula waves the bat higher, fires it in. She fouls that one off. So staying alive here, really making higher work. She's up to 56 pitches today. And her almost three innings of work. So here comes 57. It's fouled down the line. Up and out of play as the count remains full. Both teams desperately trying to end their losing skids as higher. Fires once fouled off again by Vitula. As I mentioned, the Bison have, Bisons have lost three in a row. Panthers have dropped five in a row. Looking to end those skids and move on. Happily, as there's a pitch inside for a ball, and the bases are loaded for Presley Liebrich. Yeah. 
Bases loaded in a one-run game for Liebrich, who leads the team in RBIs with 10. Well, technically, she's tied for the team lead in RBI now after Macy Conconin's two-run homer. That gave her 10 RBI as well. She looks at a strike for the first pitch, an 0-1 count now. And now she's quickly in the hole, 0-2. There's a right up the middle and caught right at the center fielder. Madison Parks. And the Panthers get out of the inning without allowing a run. Bases loaded, did not allow a run. And we'll head to the top of the seventh inning with the Panthers still with a 4-3 lead. We'll be back. Don't, please don't go away. We got one more inning here. And if it's anything like we've seen already, it's going to be a fun inning. We'll be right back. Welcome back as we begin the top of the seventh inning here. We've got some de defensive changes here for the Bisons, but before we get to that, let's, let's talk about how we got here. In the top of the first inning, first three batters reached for the Panthers as Dodge led off the game with a double. She was brought in by Sammy Moss. And that gave the Panthers a one or nothing lead. And the score remained that way until the bottom of the third when Macy Conconin hit a two-run homer, the first of her career, to give the Bisons a two-to-one lead. It didn't last long. Very next inning, a throwing error allowed two runs to score for the Panthers. The Bisons answered back in the bottom of the fourth with an RBI double from Vatula. But to tie the game at three, but in the top of the fifth inning, the woman at the plate right now, Maya Dodge, with a solo home run to left center field to give the Panthers a 4-3 to three lead. That's where we're at. Dodge currently at the plate right now. A double, a walk, and a homer, and she's currently in the hole at 1-2. and two. Emily Yakubowski trying to get Maya Dodge out for the first time today. She'll miss outside for a ball on the count 2-2. Two -two. 
So, looking forward for these two clubs, the Panthers, they'll travel just up the road to Clarksville, Tennessee for the Austin P tournament in two days here. As Dodge sends one down the line, that'll be just foul, about by about two feet. So, the Panthers will play Bellarmine at 10.30 a.m. on Friday at Clarksville, and then they'll turn right around 3.30 that same day and play Austin Pete. The Bisons, on the other hand, begin the Purple and Gold Challenge right here as there's a swing, the ball gets away, the throw down to first, By Hunt gets the out, so my Dodge is out for the first time today, and that'll bring up Sammy Moss. So for the Bisons here this weekend, also on Friday, the Purple and Gold Challenge begins right here at Draper Diamond. As there's a pitch on the inside corner by Akubowski for a strike. Your Lady Bisons will play. Southeast Missouri at 3 o'clock with a second game at 5.30 against the Dayton Flyers. Sammy Moss swings through that one for a strike. She's in the hole 0-2. Moss sends that one back against the screen. 0-2 count. One out here in the inning. So looking ahead for the Bisons in the top of, or the bottom, I beg your pardon, of the seventh inning, it'll be Macy Conconin, Caitlin Hunt, and Elise Shoemaker looking to at least get one run. As there's a diving play over there at second base by Paulson. She'll... Come up with it and get the out. A nice diving play in the hole to keep the ball in front of her. Kind of Brandon Phillips-esque, if you're familiar with the Cincinnati Reds legend. So that'll bring up Madison Parks now for the 0-2 count. Akubasi, the left-hander, fires and deals. High and outside, four ball. Park singled in the first. Had a fielder's choice in the third and walked in the fifth. So she's been on board all three times today. She'll look at a strike there. Parks will tap the outside and the inside of the plate, ready the bat. Look at a pitch high and outside for a ball. There's a pitch called for a strike and that will run the count to two and two. It's pitched by Yakubowski there, misses down in the dirt, and that'll run the count full here. Full count by Yakubowski to Madison Parks, looking to go to the bottom of the seventh inning. She'll get the sword there. Is kind of half committed to it was Parks, kind of just swung at it like a sword for the final out of the inning. And we'll go to the bottom of the seventh inning with the Bisons needing a run. It's four to three here at Draper Diamond on the. 
campus of Lipscomb University. We'll be right back. Please don't go away for our final frame of base softball right here in Nashville, Tennessee. Welcome back to the action here as Macy Conconan digs in with the Bisons trailing by a run. She hit her first career homer back in the third. And what a perfect time it would be for her second. As there's a pitch up and in for a ball. And Conan holds on that one. It's high for a ball. So a 2-0 count now. Getting a runner on was, is very important if you're a Bisons fan. Try to get them on, get them over, and get them in. Samantha Hayer still on the mound for the Panthers as Conan swings through that one. Samantha Hare, since coming in in the fourth, pretty automatic. Has only allowed one hit. That was a double as Conan looks at strike two. So a 2-2 two -two count now to number two. She'll wave the bat load. And foul that one straight back. Big moment here in the seventh inning. As Conan pops that one up to center field. Center fielder Parks calls it, comes in, and she'll get it for the first out of the inning. So that will bring in the third baseman, Caitlin Belding, sophomore, wanting to get something going here in the seventh inning. She'll shoot one into the gap, but coming over and coming in to get it is Parks. And all of a sudden, the Bisons are down to their final out. And it's in the form of Freshman Elise Shoemaker looking to extend this game and avoid dropping four in a row. Shoemaker wiggles her wrist. She'll swing at an inside pitch and foul it straight back off the handle of the bat. She knows it. Telling herself to try to stay through the zone, stay through the contact. Her body's quiet except for her hands. She'll watch that one over the outside corner for a strike, and the Bisons are down to their final strike. 
of the afternoon. Ayer sows the rubber. She'll kick, fire, and that one's fouled straight back by Shoemaker. Looking to get on and extend the game. For what looks like to be Kendall Crawford in the on-deck circle. But Shoemaker's at the dish right now. She'll look at that one outside for a ball. Shoemaker digs in. One, two, count, two outs in the bottom of the seventh inning. She'll foul that one back to stay alive and keep the Bison's chances alive. The pitch from Hare. On the inside corner for a called strike three. And that is all she wrote. The Bisons drop today's game four to three. And they'll drop to a record of four and ten. Whereas the Panthers in their five game looting skid, losing skid. And they'll advance to three and seven. Thank you so much for tuning in today for today's game. We'll stay with us here as we wrap up our post game. The great, great game here in Nashville today has truly, truly, if you have to look at it, you look at it like this, the difference was Maya Dodge. She came in, had a leadoff double to begin the game, scored a run, and in a tie game in the fifth inning was the difference with a solo home run to give the Panthers the lead that they would not relinquish of four and three. Your final line tonight, Panthers four runs on seven hits, one error. Bison's three runs, three hits, one air. Getting the loss today for the Bisons is barefoot. She'll drop to two and three. And getting the win for the Panthers is higher. That brings her record to one and two. Well, thank you all so much for tuning in to today's game. I hope you had as much fun as I did. This is only my third game. my Actually, my third day with Bison's Athletics, and I'm so grateful to be here. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you come out to tonight's game as the women take on, the women's basketball team takes on North Florida at Allen Arena in the opener of a Sun Tournament play. And if you can't join us there, join us this weekend for some softball and baseball action. Both teams will be in action this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday here at Lipscomb. So signing off, my name's Blake Forshee. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Hope you guys have a great day.